Hey man, what you playing? Oh, I'm just playing a game you haven't heard of. Huh. You know, I don't think I ever heard of a game you haven't heard of. And cut. Would it be rash for me to assume you've played a video game before? No? Oh good. Then I can say with a little more confidence that you probably came across a game that you really enjoyed, but then later in life learned that people either hate it or haven't even heard of it. I've played many a game in the past that falls under this criteria. Some even more recently, too. While I've enjoyed these games, I often find myself thinking of ways that these series could move forward or be improved on some level. Today, I will share with all you lovely YouTube-using so-and-sos a sample amount of these games that very few people aside from me have enjoyed on some level, and ideas for potential sequels that will, and eh, probably never happen. Reality is often disappointing. But if it wasn't, I wouldn't be making this video, so let's get into it. This is the Game Boy Advance. Plastic, AA battery powered, hot pocket shaped, and home to many people's childhood go-tos. One such go-to for me was a fusion of Pokemon and Street Fighter whereby children, adults, thugs, and terrorists fight in the street with upgradable toy robots. The name of the game is something that had eluded me for literal years and the cartridge I had didn't have a label on it. I didn't learn what its name was until one day, just by happenstance, I stumbled upon a Balrog review of it. That game is Power Quest. Power Quest was a Sunsoft title initially released for the Game Boy Color back in 1998. Weird coincidence, but it was actually released in Japan one day after I was born. Seeing as how it hasn't gotten a sequel from the time I was a drooling, soft-headed infant up to now when I drink alcohol and pay taxes, I don't think it's very likely that we'll see a sequel anytime soon. However, if by some miracle Sunsoft gives a developer, like, oh, say, Inti Crates, with whom they've let handle the cult classic Blaster Master franchise and give it new life with a faithful reimagining and direct sequel, I'd hope that on top of obvious improvements, such as modern graphics and improved sound, that the fighting would be fleshed out and made to service more fast-paced and combo-heavy combat. And more models to choose from would also be nice, of course. And a fresh new story that follows in the original's lightly touched upon themes of friendship, separation, and growing up would be much appreciated. Did you grow up in a low-income to middle-class household in the mid to late 2000s? <laughs> I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Did your family own a Wii? Yes, Nintendo's come from behind champion of the sixth generation consoles. Through waggling and grandma pandering, Nintendo had a hit on their hands. And many, 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 let me say it one more time, many other publishers and developers wanted a thumb in that pie. EA, very much included. Now back in 2008, Maxis gave the PC gaming world Spore. You know Spore, right? That god sim where you can grow a civilization of penis people from cell to space colonists? Well, one year later, Maxis returned to the world of Spore to make Spore Hero, a 3D platformer on Nintendo's waggly grandma magnet. Was Spore Hero a good game? No. Was it a bad game? Yes, but I was young and the game was super cheap and pre-owned at GameStop. Plus, I was a sucker for these monster designs they put on the cover. The game itself, for the most part, is a pretty non-offensive, run-of-the-mill 3D platformer. It was just a little beyond its time. It had great music, fairly well-designed levels, I especially like how they interconnect to the hub, a surprisingly involved story about uniting tribes against a common alien threat, mechanics based on customizing and upgrading your player character, and an over-reliance on barely responsive motion controls. Oh, there's the catcher! I'd actually love a sequel to Spore Hero, if it follows in the original's footsteps, but, you know, with a proper controller in place of... this. In my high school days, I actually thought it would be a good idea to make a sequel for the Wii U, specifically so that you could share your creations on Miiverse. But that would be impossible for... well, more than one reason. And now, another 3D platformer on Wii released in 2008 with Spore in the title. Mushroom Men. The Spore Wars. From the depths of space, a giant meteor hurtles toward planet Earth. A mysterious green dust settles across the countryside. Scientists concluded that the space dust had no effect on terrestrial life. But science was wrong. This little gem came courtesy of publisher Gamecock, or South Peak Games in some territories. 
and developer Redfly Studios. And it even came with a kickin' soundtrack from legendary composer Les Claypool, believe it or not. Yeah, I believe it. It actually reviewed pretty well at the time. It currently holds a 4.1 out of 5 from GameStop, and a 4.8 out of 5 on eBay. Though the Metacritic score is somewhere in the 70s. The box even boasts an excerpt from Play Magazine that calls it the best game for the Wii since Super Mario Galaxy. A franchise is born. A franchise is born. So I wrote the script and all that hoo hot at 1.23 a.m. one Monday morning. When I went to look up more on the game's history, I knew there was a game on the DS, so it was technically a franchise and not just a one-off. But what I didn't know is that there was a crowdfunded sequel that released in 2015 as Mushroom Men Truffle Trouble. That blew my mind. And now I have to buy and play that game and review it separately. But I'm keeping all this in the video because I still think Mushroom and the Spore Wars deserves the attention, damn it! Let's change things up now and look at a game I played as an adult. And on the Nintendo Switch, no less. It's similar to Power Quest in so much that it's a fighting game. It's like Spore Hero in so much that it has customizable moves. And it's similar to Mushroom Men in so much that the ultimate thing holding it back is probably the prominent motion control. I. Love. Arms. I loved it at launch. I was looking forward to it pre-release. I followed the game's development updates. I'm enthralled by the world, music, art, and subtle instances of story. I've collected at least 90% of the badges. I've ranked up all the way to 17, before being knocked back down to 16. I still play it to this day, and I may never get any of the badges for using the thumbs up grip. I've sunk over 285 hours into this game, and for probably 284.99998 of those hours, I just used a regular controller. Plus, I remapped guard to L. I'm not pressing in the right stick, screw that. I wouldn't want the thumbs up grip to go away in a potential sequel though, heavens no. One of the things I really appreciate about this game is how well it showcases the versatility of not only the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, but the many playstyles available on the Switch in general. I want a sequel astronomically bad, and I have so many ideas that I won't go over them in too much detail here, as I could easily dedicate a separate video, if not a separate series, to this topic. Suffice it to say, more modes, more characters, more world building, in essence, more of the same, please. My main fear in regards as to whether or not ARMS will ever get a sequel lies with the priorities of its producer and development team. Mr. Yabuki and his team at Nintendo EAD are responsible for both ARMS and the Mario Kart series. Ooh boy. Talk about standing on the shoulders of giants. Nintendo drops support of unique new IPs all the time. I will never forget you, Custom Robo! But Mario Kart is a console staple. It's a series that anyone who's ever seen a video game has undoubtedly picked up at one point in their life. Heck, up-and-coming YouTube sensation Demich has built his audience mostly based around his discussing Mario Kart and his desire for a new one to come to the Switch. If Nintendo EAD has been working on Mario Kart 9 since they finished ARMS updates back in early 2019, then ARMS might not see a sequel until the Switch's late-coming successor, assuming that Nintendo doesn't just F-Zero the poor franchise. But there is a slim ray of hope for any fellow ARMS enthusiasts out there because I discussed on this channel's very first video, don't watch it, it's terrible. The Switch has a very long life ahead of it. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is one of, if not the best-selling game for it, and Nintendo might just take this opportunity to revisit some of its other racing IPs. Though, that is admittedly a pretty big might. They've been pretty vocal about their not wanting to revisit F-Zero, and Diddy Kong Racing probably has some rights issues with Rare. I'm trying not to hold my breath that Nintendo EAD has been working on a sequel to ARMS in place of Mario Kart 9, but the existence of Mario Kart Tour, and now Mario Kart Live Home Circuit as supplementary Mario Kart Mindshare products, has me just a tad bit hopeful that maybe Nintendo EAD isn't focusing on Mario Kart right now. Not to mention the inclusion of Min Min in Smash Ultimate, and the delay of the ARMS graphic novel, which, as of February 2020, is still confirmed to be in development. Well... Shucks, I just don't know. I don't want to get my hopes up, but I also don't want to lose faith. 
If I, as a content creator, have any hope of becoming bigger, it's frankly just to get more attention on ARMS. Because I feel like most people who enjoy ARMS enjoy it very casually, and mostly are in it for the, uh, character designs. Have I played other games that I feel are overlooked and deserve sequels? Yes. But perhaps I'll cover them in a future video. If this one performs well enough, anyway. Or maybe if I just feel like it, IDK. But please, let me know if you'd like me to revisit this topic, and please, 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 share some games that you feel are underrated and sequel-worthy in the comments. The internet, and YouTube in particular, is a great platform for invigorating interest in what might otherwise be obscure games. I mean, just look at Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Maybe don't look at Five Nights at Freddy's. See you next time I see ya! So what's our relationship? Am I like your pet? What's my name, even? Yeah, and there were the other ones of me doing the, uh, the singing in the last FU Game Crew parody. Are we just... are we like the minions? Or, or like the little black imp things from, uh, Zero Punctuation?